to my channel. If we haven't met before, I'm Kari Greger, the artist engraver. I'm so glad you could join me today. I am going to be hand cutting a necklace pendant. Let's get into it. I get blank pendants from an engraving supply. They come in the stainless steel, brass, or silver. Also in different shapes, but I've chosen the rectangle shape for this project. They have very sharp edges. This is just straight rough cut steel. It's not sanded a great deal. Well, there's some sanding, but the edges are still very sharp. It also comes with a ring so that you can put a chain on the necklace. This is my graver and tool sharpener. It's a brand name Diamond Power Hone, as you can see. And um, I've got, I think it's a 600 bit sanding on the wheel right now. You can get different ones, but I'm just going to touch the edges of the pendant to the sander and let it take off just a little bit of that sharp corner. So I go around and I do all of the edges on this and it'll make it nice and smooth and won't scratch or harm somebody. There, all the edges are done. And now I'm going to take some sandpaper, some rather coarse sandpaper, and just give a little bit of texture to the pendant. I could sand this up so that it's just like a mirror, that it would be shiny, shiny, shiny. But I don't want to do that um, because I think that in contrast to the cut marks of the engraving, it looks nice to have sort of a brushed steel look. So I take the uh, 100 grit sandpaper and sand in one direction and create that texture on the pendant. I have to sand both sides because the pendant is two-sided and I'm going to be doing engraving on both sides. Now I can take some sandpaper and do around the edges too just to make doubly sure everything is nice and smooth and all the little bits are very nice to the touch. This is a steel plate that I used as a practice plate. Um, on one side, you can see I did some scroll, very intertwined. It is a nice idea. I mean, I can do different things with necklaces and different designs. This one is kind of nice with the fans in between the scroll. And this other one was something I was working on, I think, for a shotgun. Um, on the other side, I have different samples of ideas for back straps on uh, single action shooters. And I even put my, my uh, name on there, Steel Cut and Kari. This is my rose scroll. I like that one that I've designed. It's a very pretty scroll. Anyway, some different ideas of designs and things that I can do to a necklace too. So I'm going to be doing something like that on here. I just take a simple wood block, just a block of wood, and you can see I have glued, I've used a lot of glue on here, different, I think there was a key on that side. Um, I just add more glue or, you know, with my glue gun. And it's a way of securing the pendant, you know, instead of trying to use different pins or whatever to secure the pendant so that I can move it around and do what I want, this make sure that the pendant stays in one place. It folds it very tightly and I can engrave um, easily and not worry about the piece slipping out of the vise. I just press that piece down on that hot glue and let it cool. When it's cool enough, then I can start drawing. This is my GRS ball vise. I have a wrench that I use to open it up and it has a ball on the bottom. That's why I call the ball vise. But it swivels and pivots and I can turn it with my left hand as I engrave and it it's very secure. Now see how nicely the wood block just fits in there. It's tight. The pendant isn't going anywhere as I work on. I use a white Chinese white watercolor paint 
put a little bit of water on my finger and rub the paint onto the pendant and that creates a nice surface for me to be able to see my pencil marks. The trick is to get it smooth. You have to keep rubbing until it is like paper. Once I have my paper finished, I can start drawing my design on the pendant. This is the back of the pendant. I'm doing that first, just to get all the little details out. I want to put an inscription on there and I'll put my signature on the back. So I have to find the middle and then lay out the drawing of the lettering and the signature. There. It reads for Melissa and you can see my signature at the bottom. Very nicely done in script. If you are interested in having some engraving done, please drop me a note via email. The address is in the About tab on my YouTube channel. You can also find other social media connections below in the description box below the video. Please follow, subscribe, hit that like button, and comment. Thank you. This is my graver. It's a Lindsay. It is like a little jackhammer. You can see this is the bit or the graver that, and it fits into the rest of it. The air tube runs to the, the where the hammer is, and that, as I push down on a pedal, I, it's almost like a sewing machine. I, push the pedal down and it forces air and then that hammer really goes. It hits it a lot faster than I ever could do by myself by hand. And this just speeds up the engraving that much faster. But it also means that you have to know what you're doing because it moves so fast that you can make mistakes. It's not just one hit at a time. There, the back side is all cut. Now I take a little bit of water and I put just, it just needs a drop or two onto the surface there and wipe it clean with a cloth and that takes off the watercolor paint, the white watercolor paint. And it looks nice. I have to clean it up a little bit and polish it, but there we go, it looks very nice. We take it out of the vise. Now this next part is the trick. I put this into the freezer and that gets that glue really hard and then I can take something to pry it off. There, it is. I leave it in the freezer for, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. Go do something else. This is frozen, frozen hard. Now I have taken a screwdriver here. I probably should have used just a plain knife. The screwdriver and pop it right off of there. It has no problem getting it loose from the glue once it's frozen. Little condensation on there. Now we're going to glue, flip it over and glue it down again so that we have the front of the pendant. Once again we put some of the white watercolor paint on there and smear it around until it's nice and smooth and looks like a sheet of paper. The plan for the front side of the pendant is to put a nice border around, and I'm gonna do that first, and then put a fancy letter in the middle. I'm gonna use a very fancy script. I'm going to do the border first because as I'm turning the piece around and as I'm engraving, it my hands can rub off the uh, pencil drawings and the watercolor paint. So it is much easier for me to do the border first and then when I go in and do the center part I don't have to worry about rubbing off the pencil marks. I have to be able to see what I'm doing. This is going to be a twisted rope border 
And so I have done, marked out my little markings. Uh, those are like a millimeter or two millimeters apart. And then I, on the di you know, a diagonal, and then I draw in the swirl that's going to happen. And then I go back in and do all of the details. Here we go, all the drawing is done, and so I'm coming with the graver and starting to engrave. Now you can see, I use my left hand to turn the vise, and my right hand holds the graver. I can adjust the angle of the bevel as I go around the curves, just by rotating my wrist a little bit, and that gives a different cut. It's very bright. It makes a nice V cut. So as I rotate the wrist, then I get a different the bevel. There we go. The border is all done. It's very nice twisted rope kind of look to it. I added just a little bit of kind of flare around the edges so it's not a straight rope. It's got a little bit of pizzazz to it. I'm not going to take the paint off because the paint in the middle is has not been touched yet so I'm going to draw the fancy letter M in the middle of the pendant. So marking it all out and then I've sped this up quite a bit so that you don't have to watch me draw for several minutes but this has got to be pretty precise because I got to know where I'm going to go with the graver and I added a little bit of leaf and kind of scrolled the ends of the letter around. This is the snapshot that I would send to the owner of the gun or the uh, owner of the pendant, what I'm doing to make, get an approval. And uh, before I cut, all my clients always see a sketch like this before I cut. Now let's just get in there and cut this fancy letter M. I think it looks really nice. I'm very pleased with the way that it turned out in the drawing. Here you can see as I go around the edge how I turn the engraving, I turn the pendant into the graver with my left hand while keeping the bevel and the direction with my right hand steady. It's really a two-handed job. Yeah, every turn, every little swirl in the engraving, I have to turn the wheel. Let's take a little water and clean this off and see what it looks like without the paint on there. See if the design holds up. Now, Let's just check this out. After I have looked at it for a little bit and taken in how it reflects in the light, I turn it around and kind of examine it. I think I'm going to need more. The lines of the M are not standing out enough. So I'm going to go in and add some shading. And that's just kind of some cross hatching in certain parts and adding a little bit of texture to make the letter pop out from the background more. It was just just too little and it was getting lost. It didn't stand out against the background. So yeah, just doing some cross hatching there and filling in the lettering. Here now you can see what I did. I you know took the the letter part out so it stand out. This is a sample of what comes off. It comes off in curls. This is actually a longer one, but I'm just chipping off little bits all the time. Now, once again, this has to go into the freezer. Leave it in there for half an hour, an hour, and it's frozen hard. Now, one of the reasons why I do the back first is because I don't want to scratch it. I'm going to use a knife this time because I don't want to scratch. Um, if if I do the back first, then I can sand. If I've if taking it off of the block scratched it at all, I can sand it. You know, usually you don't get any marks, but sometimes I used a 
screwdriver and I thought there was something a little bit on the, the edge. So I thought I'm going to use a knife this time and just a blunt edge and wrapped in the, ooh, that just flew off. There we go. <laughs> Wrap it in the uh, towel there in the cloth. Lots of condensation on it. Here, I've put the ring into the end, end of the top of the pendant and I'm going to thread the chain in. And voila, we have a necklace. It turned out very nice. Just great. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below and leave a comment. Check the video description for links to the website, theartistengraver.com, Instagram and Facebook pages. And next video I'm going to be engraving um, a pair of matching Colt pistols or a pocket knife. It just depends which video gets edited first. So while you are there leaving a comment, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you will be notified when that metal cutting video is posted. Thank you for watching.